Okay, so I'd like to tell you uh, a bit about piracy, uh, more or less legal issues, but not only. Uh, basically, my aim is to answer three questions. Who were the pirates? Well, it seems obvious, but I would like to, uh, to uh, present some ancient sources that together could give us some kind of a definition of piracy. Then, how to punish the pirates? Uh, what kind of uh, punishment was applied in case of piracy? And finally, whose duty was it to, uh, to punish the pirates? Uh, at, uh, at first, I'd like to say that all these questions will be a bit intermingled, so um, I will not answer them. Um, I will answer them uh, a bit uh, altogether. But uh, at first, let's start with a, a non-ancient text. Uh, there is a nice series of novels uh, placed in ancient Rome, uh, which gives a, a perfect picture of piracy. Uh, Lindsay Davis, in uh, one of her novels, Scandal Takes a Holiday, uh, writes about piracy quincunks. Uh, that's a beautiful one. Risk, thrill, violence, pr plunder and death. Uh, the five pillars of piracy, and then she gives a very uh, a vivid picture. Brunus had a lamp table beside him on which he carefully arranged three apples, a fig, and uh, a half-eaten hard-boiled egg to represent the crucial quincunx. Uh, well, I've spared you the apples and the fig, uh, and most of all, uh, the egg. Uh, but uh, what we can say definitely is that pirates were extremely violent. And this is also uh, sustained by the ancient authors. So, for example, in uh, one of the uh, fragments surviving uh, from a, a comedy that has not reached us, unfortunately, uh, Plautus writes that uh, the pirates do not spare anyone. <coughs> they show no mercy. Parcunt uh, nemni. So, uh, they were absolutely merciless. Then a uh, more rhetorical text, Seneca the rhetorician in, his, in one of his controversies describes the pirates also as merciless, extremely cruel, not refraining from any crimes, fibus on nefas nefas felusus, so they do not care about the law, uh, both sacral and uh, and uh, the, the written laws. But what is very uh, important here is that he writes simul terras et maria latrocinantes. So they are infesting both land and sea. So the means of transport of the pirates were of course ships, but they also um, uh, uh, very often uh, decided uh, to uh, attack uh, harbors, uh, villages close to the shore, uh, small towns uh, taking captives and uh, pillaging. Uh, they are armed, this is also one of the basic features, uh, and of course uh, cruel um, uh, Humano sanguine at sueti son so, and they are uh, used to human blood. Uh, they are carrying um, uh, vincula et catenas, uh, so they are used to binding people, to incarcerating them, to, um, uh, to uh, taking them prisoners. And of course, they do not refrain from any kind of crime. So, for example, a rape of a virgin is something absolutely usual and, uh, and uh, normal for the pirates. Uh, so we've got now some elements of the definition. Pirates are cruel, they do not hesitate to commit any kind of crime. They are uh, using ships, but they uh, infest both land and sea. Uh, this text is extremely important for my purposes uh, because it gives an opinion of a philosopher of Cleanthes this time. Uh, Seneca quotes him and he says that uh, you become a pirate or a bandit 
even before you commit any actual crime, before you make your hands dirty. That means that the crime itself was not uh, taking part in a, crim in a, crim uh, in a raid. Uh, being a part of a pirate band was a crime itself. And for that you could already be punished. Of course this is not a legal definition. None of these texts are legal. But there is no legal definition of piracy uh, in the sources, which means that the tourists were using the common definition, the popular definition, and that's why I think that these texts are extremely uh, useful. So, uh, altogether, we should say that uh, being a pirate meant uh, being, of course, violent and ready for any kind of crime, but uh, if you were found among the pirates, and if it could be proved that you were a um, member of the band, of the gang, you could already be punished. So membership uh, was uh, punishable. And now let's come to a very important legal issue. Yesterday, uh, we al uh, we've already seen that um, it was quite a common situation uh, to put the criminals outside the society. So to separate them from the citizens. And this is the case, but it goes one step further. Cicero writes that a pirate is not the uh, enemy of the Roman people. So he cannot be defined as a perduelis or hostis uh, populi Romani. What does it mean? Uh, it means that you can never have a war with pirates because a war should be properly uh, started with the proper rituals and it should be against a proper enemy. This is not the case. So who are the pirates? They are the enemies of everyone, of all mankind, which means that uh, you are not bound for example, by an oath given to the pirates. Uh, so, for example, no negotiations with the pirates were valid. This, of course, has got a uh, very uh, huge importance uh, also for the Roman jurists, but for the time being, let's, um, uh, let's uh, settle with the fact that the pirates were not only outside the Roman society, but they were uh, expelled from, this, from the mankind at all. Uh, before I start uh, answering the second question, how to punish the pirates, uh, I will make a short uh, effort to explain to you the terminology. Uh, as you have seen, various terms were used in these texts to describe pirates. So uh, the most um, obvious term is, of course, the term pirata because it means the pirate and uh, there are no doubts. However, the other writers used also the term latro or predo. Both these terms could um, mean a pirate, but also a bandit, uh, a bandit operating on land. Uh, so sometimes we cannot say whether the author meant pirates specifically or uh, all the bandits. Uh, this was not so very important uh, in the later sources, but uh, in the final period of the Republic it had a huge importance, because normally land banditry and piracy presented pretty the same threat. The level of the threat was uh, similar. Whereas um, uh, in the final period of the Republic, the activities of the pirates were uh, huge. Uh, and uh, this is why uh, in this period, piracy was considered something special. And this is why, for example, here Cicero is writing only about pirates, not about all the bandits. Uh, later on, uh, this, um, this idea, this definition uh, was uh, also used uh, with regard to uh, other bandits, also those uh, operating on land. 
And uh, the same problem is, of course, with Greek sources. Also, there, uh, the terms are used uh, that are used usually that denote both uh, pirates and bandits. Uh, the most popular term, lestes, uh, can mean either pirate uh, or a bandit. Uh, and the second thing, how to punish the pirates? Well, of course, you can always change them into dolphins, uh, but uh, if you're not Dionysus, that might prove a bit tricky. Uh, yesterday, we've seen the uh, beautiful sculpture uh, of the pirates uh, being changed into dolphins. Uh, this is one of the most uh, famous um, uh, pictures uh, of this myth, uh, this uh, Achilles uh, painted by Exequias, uh, although, of course, it is debatable whether it is uh, this myth or not. Uh, this clearly is. It is a mosaic uh, displayed now at the infamous Bordo Museum uh, in, uh, in Tunis. Uh, it clearly depicts the pirates being changed into dolphins. But as I said, this is just mythology, uh, so such kind of punishment was uh, unavailable to the mortals, at least. Uh, let us stay uh, for a, a short while in uh, mythological areas. Uh, in uh, Lucian's Dialogues of the Dead, there is a beautiful uh, dialogue between uh, the king uh, Minos and uh, a pirate Sostratus. At first I have to underline that in the uh, original version in Greek the word used is precisely lestes. So we can never know whether Sostratus was actually a pirate just as uh, in this translation or a bandit. Uh, but still, what is the penalty awaiting him? He is supposed to be dropped into Periflegaton, the, uh, the uh, river of fire. Uh, so the uh, harshest uh, kind of punishment awaits him. And for what? Uh, so Stratus is trying to argue that uh, he should not be punished. Uh, what is more interesting, he finally succeeds. Uh, but uh, Minos says, have you not been convicted of villainy and murder without end? Right, so uh, generally the definition, the description uh, is similar to this um, in, the, uh, in the previous sources. If you want to know uh, why he was not punished, uh, I, can, I can tell you or you can of course uh, refer to the text. And now uh, let us see some uh, less fantastical uh, texts. The main uh, source uh, for piracy uh, in the uh, later period of the Roman Republic is of course, uh, are of course the Varines uh, of Cicero. Cicero uh, accuses Verres of uh, supporting piracy and sometimes even of being a pirate himself. But uh, throughout all uh, these speeches, some of them actually delivered, some of them only published, uh, he gives a clear picture of how the pirates should be treated. And this is what I'm going to show you. Uh, I was trying to underline the crucial parts of the text, but uh, this part is about uh, a famous general who managed to uh, to, to win uh, in a campaign against the pirates, that is uh, Publius Servilius, uh, the famous Isauricus. And uh, Cicero is describing his activities. Oh, that's a kind of surprise. Yeah, <laughs> it okay. Oh, I guess, I hope. Okay. So let's wait. Uh, basically, what Cicero is, um, what kind of picture uh, is Cicero uh, giving here is that uh, Servilius captured the captains, the arch pirates, the captains of the pirates, uh, alive, 
So he spared their lives in order to show them to the Romans. So what he did was a kind of a spectacle. He was traveling through Italy, displaying his captives. Uh, and um, finally, uh, he uh, put them to death, uh, probably crucified all of them. But what is very important, Cicero here underlines that this is a great joy to see such men uh, put to justice and that no uh, general should deprive the Romans, the populace, of the possibility to see them. Uh, so uh, what kind of mechanism uh, plays a role here? Uh, pirates are extremely dangerous. They are a major threat for anyone, actually. And that's why uh, seeing them defeated uh, releases people from this uh, fear. That's the mechanism used here. So definitely the pirates should be put to death, but after a kind of a spectacle. Uh, if it works, I will uh, come back to the text so that you can see it. Uh, but uh, in other pieces of the Verines, in other parts of the Verines, uh, Cicero accuses Verus of capturing the pirates and keeping them at home, at Verus's house uh, uh, precisely. And then he says that only when he demanded the pirates to be produced, uh, they were uh, put in prison. And he says, uh, why are you keeping the enemy of all, ma of all mankind? So again, he's using the same expression, hostem acerrimum atque infestissimum populi romani. Uh, why are you keeping them in your own house when they should be uh, kept in prison? So what he says is that pirates are a major threat and you should keep them isolated. This is also extremely important. So before they are punished, they can be displayed, yes, but they should be kept isolated. Why? Because they could be rescued by some accomplices and of course they should stir up some kind of uh, sedition or uh, anything like this. And then uh, in another passage, he suggests uh, that the pirates should actually uh, be put to death uh, uh, by securi percussio, so that they should be beheaded, uh, quite a civilized means of uh, execution. Uh, now, usually uh, the generals fighting the pirates uh, had various means of um, uh, punishing them. They were carrying uh, not only weapons, but uh, also the uh, katana, uh, the chains to, uh, to, to capture them. And then there is the uh, extremely famous story of uh, Caesar. Uh, Caesar, who was a very young man, uh, was captured by the pirates. Uh, he uh, paid the ransom that the pirates demanded and when he was free uh, he went to the governor of the province uh, sorry, at first he um, collected a fleet and captured the pirates. Uh, there are various versions uh, of the story uh, he either uh, managed to uh, catch them at sea or found the island where uh, they, uh, they had their base and um, caught them uh, unaware uh, because they were drunk. Uh, or, well, the, the, the situation was uh, well, extremely adventurous. Uh, and uh, then, uh, when he had them all uh, imprisoned, he went to the governor of the province and said that they should be executed. And for this, the governor, uh, Junkus, said that he would sell them as slaves. Caesar was actually furious about this. Uh, and he managed uh, to come to the prison where they were kept so fast so that uh, uh, the orders of the governor 
uh, doesn't reach uh, the, uh, the soldiers in this uh, prison yet. And uh, so he was able to, uh, to crucify all the pirates, uh, possibly cutting their throats before crucifixion uh, as a sign of mercy, but I think that this one is uh, uh, untrue. This is just a, uh, propaganda to show the famous Clementia Cesaris. Uh, but the penalty here is crucifixion. Uh, now, we've got here a clash between uh, two powers. Caesar, who probably had absolutely no authority in this period. This is debatable. There are some scholars who think that uh, he might have been a kind of a tribune or someone, but uh, this is not very plausible. So a man without any authority and a governor. A governor who doesn't want to fulfill his duty. So basically, uh, the duty to, pin to punish the pirates was the governor's duty. But a private individual was justified in applying the punishment in case when the governor was uh, not uh, doing what he was supposed to do. Uh, there is also a very, um, a very uh, interesting thing because you were also allowed, it was legal, to defend yourself against the pirates. So possibly Caesar here used, could have used this uh, as an excuse. He was only defending himself. Uh, it was maybe a bit too far-reaching, but still uh, possible. And then there are various uh, texts in the Digest uh, showing more or less the same. So um, the uh, jurists underline that it was the duty of the governor to make sure that this <coughs> province was uh, peaceful. And that also meant that he should uh, try and catch all the uh, bandits, pirates within his province. He should catch them. And this is the text with, uh, that we uh, shortly discussed in a discussion uh, yesterday. So uh, he should either put them on the furka, uh, a penalty similar to crucifixion, but uh, just the device was a bit uh, different, uh, where in the place where they committed their crimes so that other possible criminals were deterred from uh, committing the same kind of crime and so that the family uh, of the uh, injured parties could be satisfied. And uh, finally, it was also possible uh, to uh, uh, to make the, uh, the captured pirates fight with the uh, beasts in the arena. Uh, no, actually not fight, uh, be thrown uh, to the beast because it's at best just not to fight with the beasts. Uh, so these two kind of punish kinds of punishment are mentioned by Callistratus uh, in... Um, yeah? Okay. Just a short... Uh, just uh, no, just last uh, last one more uh, last uh, last issue. Uh, so it was also uh, a very uh, important thing that uh, even the captured pirates, as I said, were still dangerous. As all the other criminals, they had the right uh, to appeal. But it was a very uh, special case because the governor if he felt that it was in the public interest to execute them on the spot, had the right to do it uh, without the need to wait for the answer of the emperor. So uh, th this was um, certainly a very special case uh, because the pirates, even when captured, presented a serious threat uh, to the uh, community, to the public interest. Okay, so uh, that's all. Thank you so much for listening.